Whilst the stunning cup comeback, Harlan narrows his choices down. Juve make McKenny deal permanent. Atleti takes Chelsea outcast and the Tramps around up all coming up in the next few minutes. As I am your host, Matt Froelich, you are the one footballers and this is the Daily News. So first up, and Barcelona prepared for their clash against PSG and the comeback that is needed with a little comeback of their own in the Copa del Rey. That was against Sevilla after 2-0 down in the first leg. They managed to turn it around, but only, only just in the second leg. So like I mentioned, 2-0 down, Usman Dembele gets them off to an absolute fly with a ridiculous goal. And after that, it was just a barrage of chances, including actually at the other end, Lucas Ocampos missing a penalty. To Stegen was the hero that kept them in it. And then in the 94th minute after Sevilla had been reduced to 10 men, Gerard Piquet headed in the equaliser. Honestly, they, it was coming. It was coming. Barcelona were so good in front of goal, they just couldn't find the final touches, including Jordi Alba putting together some sort of... I was going to do it then. Some wicked scissor kick that kind of hit the bar. Anyway, Barcelona took it to extra time and Martin Brathwaite managed to grab their winning goal. And it now means that they have set themselves up to win another trophy. This could could be their 32nd Copa del Rey trophy, and that is an outstanding record, even by Barcelona standards. Elsewhere, though, last night, and there wasn't really much football to talk about elsewhere, there were a few crazy results in Syria, both Sassuolo against Napoli and AC Milan benefiting from late penalties. Atlanta were in fine goal scoring form, scoring five, and in the Premier League, it was, it was, it was just dull. I mean, yes, Sheffield United won. That's pretty crazy. Ian Atcher actually scored a banger. So fair play to him in the draw against Burnley. And Palace against United was a drab nil-nil. So we can kind of skip over that bit and move on to the next story. So the next story actually revolves around Erling Haaland because of course it does. It's transfer news and it's Erling Haaland. And apparently he has six choices. He himself has narrowed his options for a transfer down to six teams. And honestly, it's absolutely no surprise. I mean, apparently Chelsea and Bayern Munich are out of the running, which has left uh, Liverpool, Man City, Man United, Juventus, Barcelona, Real Madrid. Like, duh, of course it's just going to be the biggest six teams. He should have thrown a spanner in the works and been like the other one would have been, I don't know, someone else. Colchester. Shout out to the Colchester fans. I mean, it's pretty obvious that these teams are the ones with Champions League football, with the money to attract him, and also the project or the status as a club to bring in other good players to hopefully take him to the top of his game and win both team and individual trophies. If you add on Chelsea and Bayern, who are apparently out of the race, to this list, those are the top eight teams in the world. Those are the teams that you're going to sign for when you're already at Borussia Dortmund. Apparently, the striker has said that he doesn't want to make another step. He wants to jump right to the top. And there isn't really a step between Dortmund and the top level teams. Like, it's clear that Dortmund are certainly not the season, but certainly in terms of finances, in terms of attraction, in terms of status, the second biggest team in Germany. So they are the second team, they're in the second tier, and the next tier is the top tier. And like I mentioned before, it is those eight teams. Oh, plus PSG as well, forgot about them. Those are the top nine teams that any player worth his weight wants to move to to get the money and to be at the top of European football, so it's kind of obvious. As for who he'll choose, I actually have no idea. I've had so many thoughts about this, and believe us, you can look back. We've made a lot of thumbnails with Holland in different football kits. But Angelina made a video the other day, which you can find by clicking here, and you can see her opinions on where she thinks the Norwegian player will end up. Anyway, moving on, and actually talking about a German team, and Schalke, who are having a terrible season, have lost one of their players in Weston McKennie. I say lost, he moved to Juventus last summer on initial loan, and now the club have made it permanent. Around 18 million euros is the cost that Juve are paying, with 6 5 million in add-ons and honestly at the beginning of the season this one looks a little bit weird like he was a young midfielder in the Schalke team that finished 12th in the Bundesliga so for Juventus who were absolutely smashing Syria up until pretty much last summer um, who want to go to the Champions League finals who want to be successful this that and the other you would have thought that they'd be able to sign someone with a little bit more of an basically an attractive proposition than a player from the 12th place team in the Bundesliga but despite this McKenney has had a fantastic season all credit goes to him when he joined I wasn't so sure about it, but he has put in some brilliant
brilliant performances. He's got quite a few goals in Serie A from midfield and a couple of assists. And of course, who could forget that brilliant scissor kick in the Camp Nou in the Champions League against Barcelona. Moving forward, after losing so many midfielders last summer, including Matuidi, Kadira, Emre Chan. Oh, there was another one as well. They all left the club. They needed a midfielder, not necessarily to be the starter because they've got quite a few good players, but to compete within the squad and compete it, he has and earned himself a starting spot along with the likes of Adrian Rabio and Aaron Ramsey as well. Despite this though, and the fact that Juve now made this permanent, I honestly think McKenney would have done anything to just not go back to Schalke. Obviously things aren't going so well for them at the moment. In fact, they, hired, they fired sorry, their third manager of the season and now have hired a fourth manager of the season as they battle desperately to avoid relegation into the second Bundesliga. McKenney would have stayed. I reckon he just would have stood outside Juve's training ground and played for free. He would have done anything to just not go back to the Bundesliga club because Despite the fact they gave him his chance in European football, he really does not want to be playing in the second Bundesliga if he's proving that he can play towards the top of European football. Moving on then, and to one big transfer that could happen this summer, and it's been about a year since Chelsea announced that they would be signing Hakim Ziyech from Ajax at the end of the season for around £40 million. And now, a year on, He's not really in the manager's plans. Thomas Tuchel has said that it's his fault that Ziyech's not playing, but the likes of Callum Hudson-Odoi, Mason Mount, Christian Pulisic are all getting game time and all playing pretty well, so Ziyech can't get into the team. This I completely understand, but he might as well also say, who knows, maybe he has behind closed doors, like, look, Ziyech, you're a great player. I've got better options at the club. It's better off that we sell you. This is clearly what has been starting the rumour mill because the likes of Real Madrid, Barcelona and now Atletico Madrid are interested in bringing in the Moroccan. At 28 years old, he is still a fantastic player. We saw with Ajax, he's got what it takes to compete at the highest level and has insane technical ability. I just think he needs to play more. He needs to play more. He needs to get a runoff form. We've seen so many players move to the Premier League who haven't quite cut it. And you've kind of got to look at whether they've been given a good chance or not. I know that a lot of people are banging on the likes of him, Donny van der Beek, Kai Havertz, who have all come into the Premier League and really not performed. Are they getting a chance to? Like, if you're in the team for one game and then you're out and then you miss a few and then you get a few sub minutes here and there, it's not really good enough. And for Ziyech, he's a player who needs to play consistently. And I think if he goes to Atletico Madrid and if Diego Simeone's men, if they win the title, great because then he'll be moving into a title winning team full of confidence. But if he gets enough minutes and enough consistent game time, he could be a stunning player the likes we saw a few seasons ago. On top of all of this, Chelsea apparently are willing to lose a little bit of money on him so he won't cost too much. Lastly then, we come to a quick round up of the rest of today's transfer news where if Hector Bellerin is to leave Arsenal, they have apparently identified Max Ahrens and Tariq Lamptey as the perfect replacements. Elsewhere and Steve Bruce, after a bit of a training ground bust up with a few Newcastle players, is very, very close, obviously, to being sacked. Former Barcelona forward Bojan Kerkic is apparently in talks with quite a few Indian Super League clubs over a transfer. And lastly but not least, when asked about Gareth Bale's future at Tottenham, Jose Mourinho's reply was, why don't you ask Zinedine Zidane? So there you have it then. That is all from me for today. Make sure you let me know your thoughts down below. Check out everything else we've got going on on OneFootball. And until next time, I will see you guys later.